Uh, before I get started, Tom and Catherine, it's been an honor for Patty and I to share with you. Um, thank you for the very kind words, Tom. And for those who don't know, Tom isn't just a passionate supporter of Mass General. He is truly one of our country's uh, great entrepreneurs who, uh, among other things, founded Staples, for those of you that don't know in a past life, but has gone on to start many other very successful businesses and is an amazing member of our community. Um, five, yeah. Let's see. Probably about five and a half, six years ago, my really good friend Peter Slavin and uh, Dr. Haber came to Patty and I, and uh, they asked us to, to chair the 100. And Patty and I are privileged to get asked to, to get involved with a number of dinners and other things. And this one, right from the start, really struck us. And this one really struck us because it wasn't the traditional dinner to raise money for a great cause or a great institution. It was an evening that was about celebrating and honoring a community of people that are coming together to fight what is clearly the most insidious scourge that we have in terms of health issues in our country, in the world today. And Patty and I looked at it and said, wow, uh, this is really cool. The idea of a night that not only celebrates the great researchers, but the great caregivers in the hospital, like we saw in the second video, and the nurses, and the people dealing with the pain and the suffering of patients and trying to make them feel better physically and mentally. We love that idea. But then you'd see stories of little girls, like a little girl in Harlem who had lost her mother and her grandmother to breast cancer. She was like eight years old, and she baked cookies every Friday and would go around and sell them door to door and donate the money to cancer. Or the woman that lived in an urban area next to a hospital, I forget which one, but she saw a man crying one day on the street corner. She asked him why he was crying. And he said, my wife is in there getting treated for cancer. I live hundreds of miles away. I can't afford a hotel room. The woman had a room in her apartment that was free, she gave, uh, that was open. She gave it to him, and then she contacted the, the hospital and said, hey, if there are other people like this, it's available. And that started a whole network of people that did that. And we were just so moved by it. And I got to see that Tony the Fridge video last night. And I watched that video, and I'm thinking, this dude sort of represents everything that attracted Patty and I to it. because. If you couldn't hear him through his accent, he ran 40 miles in 40 consecutive days, the last 35 of which he had a crack in his femur with a 95-pound refrigerator on his back. 1,053 miles in 40 days because he wanted to bring the whole community of cancer together and, and, and tie it all into a pretty package, meaning he ran to raise money for the brilliant researchers to put to work, but he ran to raise awareness in the community at large to inspire people to do things themselves, because if you can do that, you can do anything. And to that point, and most importantly, the people who are suffering from that disease, to give them hope. And you hear the story about the mother who, he, the little boy, even as he was dying, uh, Tony the Fridge gave him hope that physically you could get through everything. And for that little boy, it didn't have a happy ending, but a lot of other people who have heard his story, it did. So for Patty and I, the last five years has been amazing. And I think back five years ago, there was no early diagnostic to get one part per billion in your blood to know you might have a cancer marker, okay? There were no, tar there were a handful of targeted therapies, less than 10, probably more like five. Immunotherapy was looked down on by the scientific community and the docs, and Mass General Hospital five years ago was the only hospital in this country that was routinely testing as a part of standard protocol cancer tumors to be able to catalog and database the DNA of tumors, the makeup of them, and to see what, what drugs might have some effect on them. We were the only hospital in the country. In five short years, in five short years, what we have going on today at the Mass General Cancer Center is really the future of cancer care 
all coming together today in one place. Dr. Haber's CTC chip, which is now in clinical trials, if you were here last year, you heard me talk about it, but with just a few drops of blood, a little business card sized thing with little tubes on it, and they do things to it, they can, <laughs> they can pick up one part per billion in your blood of a circulating tumor cell. Really early stage, great diagnostic. Then they can take that cell and in the labs, and they can grow it into a cell line of that tumor, and using computers and the great database we have together, figure out a couple of things. They can figure out what targeted therapies are gonna be best for that cancer, and then with immunotherapies, you can start to use your own body's immune system to fight cancer, so for example, um, the, a CAR T cell therapy, which is one of the immuno cell therapies, and I scientifically I can't do this well, but in English, what it really means is you get a little blood out of your body, they isolate these T cells that are in your blood, and then they re-engineer the cell with these CARs, and I don't know what it is, but basically they know what your cancer is, and they can engineer your own blood cells to go in and like a homing device, attack the cancer. And when you layer that on top of targeted therapies, we're talking about what the future of cancer care is gonna be. And that's why five years from now, 10 years from now, if we haven't eradicated this disease, we're gonna be very, very close to it. And thank you to Henry and Belinda Tremere, who have helped finance the unit that lets us do all the clinical trials with immuno and targeted therapies. So, with all of that said, as Tom said when he was up here, we're approaching $1.9 million tonight. This event uh, is gonna set a record no matter what, but we wanna really blow through $2 million. So each of you has one of these little cards in front of you. And what I would ask you to do when you look at it is to figure out what's most meaningful to you, because five or $10 can be extremely meaningful to somebody. 500 or 1,000 can be meaningful to somebody else. I notice the card stops at 25, but feel free to write something bigger down because maybe 10 or 25 is meaningful to you, or maybe it's 50, or maybe it's even $100,000. But whatever is meaningful to you, if you believe in what you've heard about tonight, if you want this community just to continue to get stronger and this disease to get closer to being eradicated, and if you're emotionally disturbed, I would ask you to please, please, please fill this out to the best of your ability. And the beautiful hearts we saw Paige Hodel making for Madeline. Anybody that hands in a card, we have people walking around the room, you'll get a keychain with one of her just gorgeous hearts on it and hopefully you'll think of Paige and Madeline in this great evening. And uh, I wanna thank everybody for being here tonight. We have a special way we're gonna close the evening. I'm gonna give about 30 more seconds since she told me to kill time, Sarah did. I don't know how to do that though. <laughs> so I would ask everybody to turn their cards in quickly because we're gonna close the evening with one of our winners tonight. Uh, Charlie Scapoletti is gonna come up on stage and he's one of our honorees and play his song, A Beautiful Day for Us. <laughs>